This is Coach Lee, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about long distance breakups and no contact. Take a second and click the subscribe button below so that you can be notified when I have more content that's helpful to your situation. And that includes relationship dynamics, dating, marriage, and attraction, not just breakups. So click the subscribe button below, and even after you get your ex back, I can still help you with videos on relationships. A lot of my coaching clients are in long distance breakups. In fact, the majority of my coaching clients are in long distance breakups. That should tell you a lot about the difficulty of long distance relationships. And they are very difficult because this person is not with you every night. You're not with them. And a lot of things can go wrong when that's the case. The bottom line is as wonderful as modern technology is that allows us to communicate with each other and keep up with each other and even see each other's face and hear each other's voice. Nothing beats face to face, eye to eye, body to body. Nothing can beat it. And usually most people cannot handle a long-term long distance relationship. If you are in one and you haven't broken up yet, just know you are on borrowed time, most likely. You two probably want to end the distance at some point anyway and actually be together in the same area, maybe even get married or move in together. And just know that the odds that you can make it work long term without that are slim. And I hate to say that. It's not, it's not like I want to say that, but I'm telling you this based on nearly two decades of experience in the relationship recovery service, that this is tough. And if you're watching this video, you already know it's tough because you're most likely in a breakup of a long distance relationship. So if you've seen a lot of other videos of mine, you know that I talk about the no contact rule a lot. And if you haven't, all you have to do is search my channel for no contact rule. I will also put a link to the no contact rule videos I have in the description below, along with a link to my emergency breakup kit. And you can look at those and you can get the kit, of course. But the no contact rule is that you do not contact your ex after they have broken up with you. Now, if you were the one who did the dumping, that does not apply to you unless the other person cheated. But if you did the dumping, there was no cheating and you want your ex back, you do not go into no contact. That is the exact opposite of what you should do. The ball is in your court and you should be the one to reach out. And if you've been dumped, you are nodding your head right now because you want that person to reach out. The no contact rule works very well because it creates, first of all, a sense of loss for the other person eventually. I have a video, it's a very popular video called stages your ex goes through during no contact. I will link to that in the description below, but basically it talks about how no contact, how you not contacting this person after they've broken up with you works on their mind. And I'm not trying to sound cheesy or oversell it, but it does work on their mind. They go through different stages. The first one being relief, which throws most people off and makes them wonder if no contact is going to work at all. I can tell you that usually it does work. Usually you hear from your ex and they just kind of reach out casually because they aren't 100% sure yet, but they're moving in the right direction and you need to be patient with that. But I'm assuming you know a decent amount about the no contact rule and at least believe it's a viable option for you in your situation or you would not be watching this video. This video is about no contact and long distance breakups. So the first problem we have with a long distance breakup and you using no contact is that the other person is already used to a form of no contact and that is no physical contact. They are probably used to going for long periods of time without holding your hand, without kissing you, without having sex with you, without even hugging you. So that form of no contact, they're already really good at dealing with. That's a problem. It's obviously not as much of a problem if you two saw each other a lot. The more that you two saw each other, the less of a problem that will be and the more effective no contact will be. But basically night after night being alone and even if they're texting you at first, they may not feel alone with that, but eventually they probably will start to feel at least some feelings of loneliness and just wanting human contact that works against you. That's probably why you're watching this video. The next thing, and this is very important is that no contact at least in part attracts them back to the status quo, the best, of the status quo. What do I mean by that? It means that they will look back at the relationship and remember the wonderful times that you two had together, 
because they don't have you annoying them, bugging them, reaching out, begging and pleading. And so in order to fill the space that you occupied, because this is new, the, their brain basically says, where did this person go? This is curious. I'm used to this happening and this happening. I'm used to this person being part of my day, even if it's just a text message or a phone call. And so what happens is they start to kind of fill in some of that, even if they really wanted to break up, they will start to fill some of it in with memories. They will reflect and they will reflect. Certainly after the relief period, they will start to reflect some just because they feel like it's safe to do so because they don't feel like you are pestering them. You're not abusing contact. So you're not in their face all the time. And so they can kind of sit back and indulge a little bit in some of the good times that they had with you. And it's an odd thing that they would do that. But most of the time, the person who did the dumping will do that, especially when they start to have some doubts and they usually will, even if it's just something small, all we need is a little bit and they will remember back on the good times. Now, if it's enough to get them to reach out to you or for them to want to get back together, obviously we have to wait and see, but the odds of them reflecting on the relationship, remembering some of those times are very good. Most relationships have wonderful, very good times for people to look back at, to remember, and even to miss. However, with a long distance relationship, the issue becomes that they look back throughout most of the relationship. They're going to see the problem that was there, the distance. Now you've possibly heard me say in other videos that if they break up with you because of the distance, even after they've been willing to travel this space, willing to deal with it for a period of time, then I say, well, then emotional attraction fell because the distance did not change. So what changed? Emotional attraction fell. They are not as attracted to you as they were. Now here's where it can get a little tricky, but why did emotional attraction fall? It didn't just fall for no reason. That's a basic principle of science. Every action has a reaction. So that means every reaction had an action that caused it. So emotional attraction fell very possibly because of the stresses that were placed on the relationship because of the distance. However, just like I've said in other videos, when there are issues in the relationship after emotional attraction has fallen, you can't just fix the issue and instantly get emotional attraction back. And that's very frustrating to people because these issues will be identified often by the person who broke up with you. They'll say, this is why I can't take this anymore. It's been too long of me having to tolerate this. And so the person thinks, okay, I'll just fix this and I'll get them back. I'll go tell them, I'll show them I've changed and ta-da, they're attracted to me again and we'll just ride off into the sunset. That's not how it works because emotions do not always react to facts. I'll just give you a quick example. If someone came into the room and you and I were having a drink and we were talking about the weather or something not nearly as boring and someone suddenly comes in and tells you that a close family member had been killed in a car wreck, you would go into grief and panic and mourning. If an hour later it was found out that this was not the case, that it was someone else and that you were accidentally misinformed you would actually still be in some panic. You would still experience repercussions of that. You would even be in a situation where you would start to feel anxiety, nervousness, and you wouldn't even know why. And it was, it's because your body and your mind are still recovering from what happened because your emotions do not move as quickly as the facts. That is even more so the case with relationships because just because this other person says, look at me, I've changed. It does not mean that the other person instantly with the snap of a finger feels attraction for you again, or feels more attraction for you again. It just does not work that way. And many of you have learned that because I talk to you on the phone, you schedule a coaching call with me, which you can do so at myexpatcoach.com. There's a link in the description below to do that. And you will ask, how do I show this person the changes I've made because I've changed. And of course, a lot of times it's only been a week or two which makes it less believable to begin with. The other person is likely to say, well, that's nice, but I don't really think that you've completely changed in a week or two. It takes demonstrating. It takes time to really show that, that that's really happened. And they may not verbalize that. They just will have doubts that you've really changed. And that's when you're rejected again and you've broken no contact and you've, you've set yourself back. But the question is, how do I 
show them I've changed without breaking no contact? And the answer is, it's very difficult. But because breakups are different than being in relationships, and you're saying, of course they are. What I mean is, is that what you should do in a relationship is not always what you should do after you have been broken up with. For example, if you were in a relationship, you two would be texting a lot. If you were steady, as some people say, you were stable, you were in an exclusive relationship, you would be texting a lot. Most couples text throughout the day. It's like an ongoing conversation. Sometimes it's even too much, but don't let that keep you from doing it often because you two should be in communication quite a bit. It's very opposite of that after the breakup. The same is true when there are changes that need to be made. Sure, the changes need to be made, but that's not what's going to reattract them. What's going to reattract them is loss, reflecting on the relationship and missing the good times, and believing or being willing to believe that you can change. That's what it takes. It's odd, but trying to show them you've changed will actually usually backfire. So what does that have to do with long distance relationships? Well, a lot of times people, when they've been broken up with by someone and distance is listed as one of the reasons, they will up and move right away or they'll show up to try to bridge that gap quickly and say, I'm moving here, let's go look for apartments or let's go look for houses or whatever. Usually the other person is a little bit creeped out. I have yet to see a case where that reaction got the other person back, at least in the short term. So if you're thinking, I'm just gonna show up, trust me, that's not gonna work. The odds of that working are very slim. Now that doesn't mean that you should not present to them that you will move for them. And I'm going to get into that in just a second. With no contact and long distance breakups, it's difficult because not every day counts of no contact because they don't feel it as strongly. As I've already mentioned, they're used to having a lot of no contact with you. Certainly a lot of no contact physically. They've had to deal with that. So that does seem to affect the entire no contact process. And so sometimes it can take a lot longer for them to feel it. The problem with that is, is that they are also more likely to move on quickly. And I talk a lot about that in my emergency breakup kit and give you some information that's very important on that that would take a long time to explain in this video. But basically the threat of the moving on quickly is there. And so it's sort of a catch 22 in that they don't feel as much no contact. They don't feel the effects of no contact as much. And so that combines with the fact that they can move on faster. That's problematic if you're in a long distance breakup. But don't worry, I am gonna tell you some ways that this can work and some ways you can get your ex back from a long distance breakup. So you want them to miss you during no contact. The problem is if it's a long distance relationship, they've probably done a lot of that. And so it can work with you and it will, but it can also work against you. And that's why in my emergency breakup kit, I talk about how you can reach out to them and when you should, because as you possibly know from watching some of my videos, I don't believe in a permanent no contact. I think that that's not practically sound. I don't think it makes any sense. And that's because I've been able to observe this for nearly two decades. I'm not basing this on good sounding theory or you ought to do this because you want to show them and don't ever contact them again. You know, I'm not into that. You want to get your ex back and I don't think that you're sitting there wanting to show them or wanting to really stick it to them. I think that you just think that this person is confused. They're going through something in their mind and their heart and they're not sure. And you know that you're good together and you want to see if it can work. So I try to operate in the real world. And if you're there with me, then let's keep going and let's talk about some practical ways you can get your ex back in this situation. So after a certain amount of time in no contact, you don't have anything to lose. And so you might as well reach out to them. It's possible that getting a little bit of traction, getting some positive interaction can get them communicating with you again, thinking that it could work and you could get them face to face, which is so important. With long distance relationships, sometimes you have to find a reason that you're gonna be there and then suggest a get together. And I go over how to do that in my emergency breakup kit. But basically, let's say you have some business come up there or some family that you need to go see. It doesn't have to be absolute. It's pretty flexible. If you just wanna go visit the area, you don't exactly have to tell them that. You can just say, I have some business there. And while you're there, I don't know, talk to somebody in an elevator about your business. It's a business trip. You can write it off so it works. And then you just simply see when they're available during that time to get face to face with you because it has to happen. It's very important. 
And I just gave you a very quick summary of that strategy, but I go over that in my emergency breakup kit in great detail. And you can get more information about my emergency breakup kit in the link in the description below. And it's a powerful thing. I get emails every day. It's a blessing. It's encouraging. It makes me want to do more videos because people tell me that my emergency breakup kit has gotten their ex back and it's humbling and it's exciting. And it's what gets me out of bed each morning. When you see them face to face, you need to do something. And it might surprise you that you're hearing this from me, but you will need to give them some light at the end of the tunnel. And that is if you're willing to move to them, or if you're willing to have them move to you, whatever it takes for the two of you to be at the same place locally, you need to tell them that you're willing to do that. And that you're not just going to keep saying someday we will someday we will it won't work you've got to have a sure plan and that may be a plan that takes a year but you've got to at least show them that it can work and you're moving toward it because if you keep saying someday we will someday we will trust me if they're not motivated at this point and they have broken up with you which means they are no longer motivated to be in the relationship that's because emotional attraction fail that won't work anymore someday is out the door they do not trust it they don't believe it they're tired of it it hurts you've got to start working on an absolute plan and say this is how we're going to do it step by step you two need to figure that out you need to show them the light at the end of the tunnel at least to give them something logical to think about some pushback so that when they have those days of doubt and they probably will that they will know that you are willing at this point to bridge that gap to get rid of the space and for you two to finally really be together. That has to happen. And I go over how you can do that in my emergency breakup kit. And you can get a link to that in the description below. Long distance relationships are very difficult. And if you are in one, just know the space and the distance will affect the relationship negatively. And your odds are not great of being together with this person long term, unless you can bridge the gap and have plans to do so. If at the moment you two are not broken up and you're in a long distance relationship, just know if this matters to the other person, if they talk about it and you will know if it does, you need to go ahead and find out if they want to be with you locally, if they want one of you to make the effort to do it, because at some point it will affect things. So if you can be working toward that beyond just saying someday we will, someday we will, that will be a big help to keeping you two together. Get more information on my emergency breakup kit in the link below, or you can schedule a coaching call with me at myxbackcoach.com. That's myxbackcoach.com. This has been Coach Lee, and as always, thank you for watching.